Welcome to the Potter Blog site, December 20th, 2012. Merry Christmas, everyone. This year we spent approximately $2,300 on doing professional gamma spectrometry food testing. And our most recent test that we're reporting on the day is the discovery of uh, radioactive black walnuts here in Missouri from uh, Bottomland out of a, a playground. And we'll get into that uh, in more detail in a moment. Uh, but first, we'll show you what we're, we'd like to test next. Uh, hopefully with the help of your donations. Uh, so far we've received approximately a thousand dollars in donations to offset our two thousand three hundred dollars in testing. Um, this is a coconut. Fell in the Florida Keys on July of 2011. We believe this will give us a, a very good indication of uh, how far south the cesium cloud went. If you'd like to help us uh, find out and determine what our risk is Please donate. On to the Missouri black walnuts. Uh, before we sent these out to a lab, we did our own test with our Geiger counter. It took a 10 minute time test, and we'll show you here. Let's start it. Black walnuts here, just took a 10 minute time count. 580 total counts, it's 58 counts uh, per minute. And these are the black walnuts. So, these come from uh, Missouri bottom land. Uh, they were in the wild. Uh, background radiation was 376 counts. So these came in 150% over background radiation. So we decided to uh, send these off to the lab as these would give us a pretty good indication of uh, what might be in some of the bottom land here in Missouri from uh, Fukushima. Uh, the good news is, is uh, there were no detections of heavier radioactive man-made compounds like uh, cesium-137 or cesium-134. But, very interestingly, uh, there was a detection in here of uh, beryllium-7. And Let me zoom in on that. And We actually came up with uh, four becquerels per kilogram of uh, beryllium-7. Now beryllium is a uh, very strong uh, beta producer. Uh, for every single gamma produces, it produces approximately nine beta rays. So it's heavily uh, beta favored. Now, one thing that no one else will tell you about beryllium-7 is that it is possible that it comes from Fukushima. Uh, the methodology from, to get it from Fukushima to here would be uh, the production, the spallation of uh, nitrogen via the corium. Basically, uh, neutrons or protons coming out of the corium, slamming into uh, either liquid nitrogen or gaseous nitrogen uh, pumped into the, uh, the containment. Uh, this would produce beryllium-7. Beryllium-7 is lighter in weight than either nitrogen or oxygen, so it has a modality to uh, travel and uh, wash out in the rain. Now whether or not this is from uh, Fukushima, we can't say. Now there is another production, actually it's very similar. Again, uh, there's a natural methodology where beryllium-7 is produced and that is from uh, neutrons and protons uh, uh, striking nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere. Typically it's from a, a coronal mass ejection. Uh, this is a well-known uh, productive capability. And early on in the Fukushima crisis, in the initial stages when there were high detections of beryllium-7 going on, it was almost always blamed, I think it was always blamed, on uh, natural occurrences. They never tell you that it could come out of uh, what's going on in Fukushima. Now, as far as this is concerned, we believe it likely to be from uh, coronal mass ejections, at least the majority of it, just because there have been a lot of those going on and because there's been a drought in Missouri. And just to make the video quick, uh, we suggest if you want more detail, read the, uh, the show me or go to the Potter blog site. But um, we've reduced our risk mitigation, uh, basically our risk mitigation uh, threshold for items grown in the Midwest uh, over the spring and summer of uh, this year. And that's basically because of the drought. Almost everything that hits uh, the Midwest from Fukushima and that has a potentiality to build up in the, the soil uh, 
comes down via rain. Now, out on the west coast, different story. Uh, the Cascade Mountains and uh, the Sierra Nevadas uh, block a lot of the low-level stuff and bring it out into the uh, watersheds uh, west of those mountain ranges. So we still have a high, very high risk mitigation threshold for anything coming, any food product uh, west of the Cascades or the Sierra Nevadas or even in Canada because they're not in a significant drought. But again, this is good news in so much as there was no cesium detected in this uh, small chunk of bottom land. So hopefully that's some positive Christmas news. But the crisis is ongoing. And with every rainstorm, it accumulates. But it's just been accumulating very slowly now, thanks to the drought. Good night and Merry Christmas.